Today we're gonna take a look at our creative process. I'm not sure if you know this, but Falcon Shield members are scattered around the world. Me and Martin in Sweden, Lars in Germany, and Kenny in Texas together form a production team that works incredibly well together. Not to mention we utilize the talents of lots of other individuals all around the world in our process. We're gonna use the Arcane Shift track as an example, but this will give you a pretty good sense of how we work in general. Like everything creative, it starts with an idea. May it be a new League of Legends champion, other games that we love, or some untold aspect of a game we find intriguing. Then we decide on a style, something that fits the theme, and we're usually not afraid to experiment with different genres. In the case of Arcane Shift, it came out a bit differently. Our friend and collaborator Stan Lyon, who has made some videos for us in the past, is an incredibly gifted animator and After Effects wizard, and he came to us with this amazing looking animated Ezreal splash and was offering to customize it to a song of ours. Now this is the kind of stuff that ignites our inspiration, so we accepted and started working on an instrumental. Most often I take it upon myself to write the instrumental. But since we wanted a fast-paced metal song, Martin was tasked with writing riffs and a song structure. Uh, we decided that this song would be in the melodic metal style. Um, and when I'm gonna write a song from scratch, it's, it's different from time to time. But with this particular song, I, um, I was just walking around thinking about melodies riffs in that style and after a minute or so I came up with uh, I was humming like and I thought this is great so I went to the studio um, and recorded the guitar for that So um, I got the key and I got the tempo uh, and I made a very simple drum beat just to have something to play along to. And after that I tried to get the full form of the song. So I, I pushed the rec button and uh, tried to improvise a song from the beginning to the end just to get the rough form of it. And uh, with that done I, I went into some detail work, just changed some chord there and change some notes. I usually use uh, this Fender Stratocaster uh, with a um, DiMarcio humbucker in the bridge. It works well for uh, rock and metal I think. And I've used this for the past couple of years so I'm, I'm used to this guitar. I think it's good. Um, and I work in uh, Logic um, and I'm lining in the guitars so I got uh, the line box and preamp and an audio interface of course um, but I used to um, use real amps before and micing up stuff and so on but nowadays I, I mainly use the tune track stuff for, for amps uh, the easy mix things, the metal guitar gods, and amps, stuff, I, th I think they sound really good. Most of the times I receive a draft of the song from Joseph uh, to get the idea of the song. And there's uh, drums, keyboards, bass, rhythm guitars, and demo vocals sometimes. Um, and I listen to it and try to um, Think is is there something I can do to make this even more interesting, or can I amplify some parts or emphasize? For example, if the rhythm guitarist is playing for 16 bars, maybe after eight bars I can come up with the. Um, uh, like to create some uh, variation in the upper register if the other guitarist playing in the lower register. I can overdub some melody lines like then I can 
make an octave or, or some harmony like, just to create some more depth or fullness and I also um, think about uh, fill-ins between parts so instead of just going from the verse here for example to the pre-chorus instead of just going from one chord to another maybe create some movement like a drummer would to prepare the listener for the next part Quite far from the finished product, but creating songs is an iterative process. You add, remove, improve and develop until you're finished. But always keep in mind the final result. The vision should be clear. I really liked what Martin did with the first draft and I improved a bit on it by adding and changing some parts, I added some draft drums and started chiseling out the rest of the instrumental arrangements, other instruments, effects, sounds, etc. My changes were sent back to Martin, who sent me clean and polished guitar takes, ready for final production. Simultaneously, the draft is being shared with Kenny, who usually is in charge of lyrics and voices. What you mean do I research? Do you research? Yeah, I thought so. Basically, my research process is, once I'm given a character to write for, I read up on their lore, I play around with them for a few hours, see if I like the character or not, you know, see what I like versus what I don't like, and then I pick up subtle things in the lore, um, or I pick up references that are made throughout the lore uh, that seem like they're in reference to other things, including the character's design and whatnot, and I go and research those other things. Sometimes research is easy, sometimes research is difficult, sometimes there's just content I'm just not interested in, uh, and sometimes I love a lot of the stuff that inspires a character. Uh, so once I find that base, uh, I'm, I'm good for a while to write, and I kind of, I make sure that everything uh, blends in efficiently, you know, with the content that I've been given or with the information that I have learned uh, through research. So yeah. Man, let me tell you something. The best equipment you ever gonna use is gonna be your brain. All right, fam, use your mind. But also microphones and audio editing stuff uh, probably helps too. Uh, my previous microphone was actually and MXL 990, uh, it was an XLR microphone, it's super cheap right now, like if you would just wanted uh, a cheap XLR mic uh, for recording, because I never use USB mics for recording, I only ever use those for Skype, but if you just want a cheap XLR mic, the MXL 990 is super cheap right now. Um, but my current microphone is actually a $319 uh, AKG Pro Audio C214 condenser microphone, uh, and it's cardioid. Uh, this microphone, I really like, you know, I don't often change mics, you know, uh, in terms of uh, software, my current software that I use in order to record anything is Mixcraft. Um, I know Joseph uses different software uh, for recording, like I believe he uses Cubase, but personally, I only ever use Mixcraft for anything, for recording vocals, if I want to record guitar, if I want to mix anything, it's all done in Mixcraft for me. So I, there there are better programs out there, of course, but I just, this, this just works for me. Yeah, working on songs is an experience. Uh, sometimes it's, it's really strange because I'll be interested in a certain subset of songs and then another subset of songs I'll have I want nothing to do with. You know what I mean? Like um if it if it has to do with like a, a champion or a set of champions that I just don't I don't find interesting, I want nothing to deal with, then I'll be kind of like 
I'll be kind of down when I'm working on it, but you know, I'll still give it my best, but I'm just, I'm going to be down when I'm working on it because this isn't appealing to me. But then certain champions, like if ev anytime I ever get to do anything regarding um, Mordekaiser or Malzahar or, or any of these Yordles, like, cause I think Wordles is, is pretty, pretty great. It's, uh, it's been some of my best writing uh, anyways. Um, but anytime I'm doing something like that, I'm super interested. It's always fun for me. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, the, the most important thing is that, you know, I, I love being a part of this band. Uh, I love my band members. I love the people we get to work with like Nikki Taylor. She's awesome. Uh, so really this is just kind of, it, it's great. You know, like I, I get to do things on my own, uh, whenever, you know, if, if Joseph's like, Hey, I need you to do lyrics about this for this instrumental and i'll be like great and then i'll disappear for like <laughs> a couple days or so or even in in really good cases i disappear for a, a little a little under uh two to three hours and then i'll come back with something and he'll say if it's good or not and then he'll he'll give me information on what needs to be changed or not um but for the most part i i just love that i don't really have to interact until it's time for me to interact with anyone you know, it, it's just I get to work, I finished I finished the job, and then I I put it down and I go, listen, this is what I got. I don't know how you feel about this. Um, uh, let me know what you think, and then you can get back to me whenever. And uh, it's just it's a really free flow environment for me. You know, like I I've got a ton of freedom to do stuff in a way that that I see fit to do them, um while still managing to work within any guidelines that are necessary for me. So it's, it's pretty cool. So Kenny sends me lyrics and a vocal guide. Sometimes I re-record the vocals if I have a certain vision for the melody. Then we decide on a vocalist and we manage to get a hold of Mike Luciano, who is a friend of Lars's. So at this point, I have everything I need. Well played riffs, great arrangement and an awesome lead. When I get into the end production phase, I start out with the drums and make sure that they sit well. Heavy, defined, good sounds, can't be tune track stuff. And if you're like me, playing them on a keyboard or programming them, make sure you put in a little extra effort to make them sound genuine and cool. Not trying to pretend like they're live drums, but you should program them good enough to not have the programming be obvious. Make sure to get a little dirt and humanization in there. Other plugins I use a lot, except from the TuneTrack catalog, would be Native Instruments, Complete Suite, uh, Damage, Action Strings, East-West Symphonic Orchestra, Silent, to mention a few. I'm not gonna get into the nitty-gritty how I think when I produce and mix. I'm not a great instrumentalist or singer, so the production phase is where I put the most effort. But it could be a very, very long video series talking about just that so I'm not gonna get into it. My general rule of thumb is that if it sounds good, it's good. If it doesn't sound good, then don't hold on to it. Scratch and redo until it's good. Arc and Shift was a relatively simple arrangement. Not a lot of channels, but I did give it some extra attention in regards of sound. So all in all, it's a track I'm proud of. you enjoyed this little behind the scenes video let us know if you want to see more or know more about our process oh and we are working on the next this is war don't worry and it's not gonna be Sharima <laughs> <laughs>